has so much energy. And I always end up having mixed feelings. Anyway, but deep down, I'm an, I'm an optimist, and I think I'm going to die being an optimist. I truly believe that there's not a lack of people wanting to change the world and make it a, truly a better place, but that it's so damn hard to organize a sustainable way of doing it. And this is what I mean. This is my friend Gonzalo, um, back in Buenos Aires. He was organizing manually, alphabetically, over 18,000 registration cards for our political party. I mean, and the issue here is not so much poor Gonzalo's sanity, but the fact that we as a political party, we couldn't receive any funding at all until we jumped through the hoops of building a top-down, hierarchical organization that the government understands is a proper organization. Essentially, we were forced to convince the status quo to give us permission to transform the status quo. The incentives there are clearly not very well aligned. This is... Oh, sorry about the effect. Um, this is... GM25 is um, um, a political movement um, whose goal is to bring about a new democracy in Europe. And they want to grow and scale in a decentralized way. They want to enable local, local groups in cities around Europe to have their own budget and carry out activities to foster their mission. But the problem that they have is that in order to do that, they need to have hundreds of legal entities around Europe. This is POC21. POC21 was, I'm sure there's many of you guys here, <laughs> Um, an eco-hacker camp that came together during the, um, the climate talks to develop software and hardware to tackle climate change. Now, POC21 group, they wanted to keep collaborating after the camp ended, and at the same time, they wanted to give their sort of wider community an opportunity to support them. And so, they very quickly set up, I mean, they're hackers, so it took them like, two seconds, to set up a crowdfunding page. But very soon they realized that they had a little problem. They need a bank account to put the money into and withdraw money from, right? This is a true collective of people distributed from all over the world. There wasn't an entity behind them. So doing that was sort of quite the challenge. They ended up solving it, but it really transformed um, 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 an energetic group of people into suddenly into an administrative headache. Like hacking together is great, but to go beyond that, to open a legal entity, spend two, three thousand dollars or euros a year in accounting services or legal fees, or worse, having to decide who's the president or the director of a distributed group of people that are just doing something amazing together, right? Um, it's, that's stopping, that's blocking so many amazing initiatives to thrive. Because really asking our generation, asking us to build a top-down um, hierarchical organization in order to operate is the same thing as asking who's the president of the internet. <laughs> right? it's, it doesn't make sense, it's very absurd. And it not only is out of sync with who we are, with how we operate as communities, as networks, with our essence. But it's also so freaking inefficient. And I think it happened to all of us here. We have to decide if and which legal entity to build, where we're going to do it, how we're going to manage taxes, and where we're going to do that. Um, if we are even going to be able to have the money to cover for the operational costs, even before we start, Who's actually going to step up and take responsibility in the name of a distributed global community? Right? Who's going to be there to manage the bank account? Who's going to be withdrawing funds? I'm sure it happened to everyone here, right? Rinse and repeat every social movement, every political movement, every amazing initiative um, has gone through that. And the problem is, it's because of the operating system that we are forced to operate on. One that is defined 
and optimized for corporations to compete in a scarcity-driven economy. And the, our, our communities, the, our collectives, um, in a world that speaks corporation, we end up kind of being pushed to the fringes, right? Not, not, not really fitting in, not, not knowing how to operate. As my friend Alana says, we end up being circles in a world made for triangles. And that, it's stopping us from thriving. It's stopping us from achieving the impact that, that I know we can have. Because the internet has been great, and I'm preaching to the choir here, but allow me. Um, it, the internet has been great at bringing people together, enabling us to communicate like never before, organize, cut the costs of really designing, imagining, thinking new ideas. But when it comes to going beyond that and building a sustainable way of implementing them, boom. We are back talking with lawyers and accountants. Look, I have nothing in particular against lawyers and accountants, but no, I, I don't, I promise. But it's very hard to argue that that's where we should put the focus, right? So having one legal entity per group, it's like, it's, it's extremely absurd. So it seems to me like what we need is to define a new um, social and economic unit that is going to enable us as communities, as networks, to operate. And we call them open collectives. So open collectives is a community of people with a shared mission that operates in full transparency. And it's a new social and economic unit. Having one legal entity per collective is the same thing as having one server per blog online. We all of us end up in our own little silos doing the same repetitive tasks. Hire lawyers, fire for a legal entity, dealing with taxes, setting up a bank account. And we don't have any of the shared benefits. We can't make that once and then everyone else can profit from that. Right? So it seems to me like the problem that is emerging here is how do we achieve decentralized, scalable, mass collaboration with money? How do we enable the open collectives of this world to contribute, to collaborate at a, at a scale that is global, but that involves funding, that involves them actually having a budget and managing it? So our contribution to this little problem here is called Open Collective. Open Collective is an open source platform for transparent finances. What Open Collective does is enables collectives like open source projects, social movements, um, global mission-driven communities, um, novel political parties to receive funding and disperse it transparently without needing a legal entity or a bank account to do it. And the way we do it is we do it by mutualizing, by sharing activities such as bookkeeping, fiscal sponsorship, or fundraising. And Open Collective is transparent by design. And it's this level, anyone can see the inner workings of a collective, where the money is coming from and where it's going to. Anyone can contribute at any time without needing to ask for permission or to be part of a formal organization. Anyone can emerge as a leader and then take a step to the side and let someone else take on without that meaning a mountain of bureaucratic paperwork or worse, disrupting the organization, right? And this level of transparency by design is what enables existing organizations to virtualize their legal entities in the same way that servers were virtualized at one point, and so now there's a bunch of co online content hosted in the same server. This, that's the same process that we want to see happen with legal entities. They virtualize their entities and they host collectives. So what they do is they enable, they free the collectives to focus on what they do best, to focus on their work, on what they love, 
instead of focusing on the legal structure to do it. Really, host organizations are the heroes of this story. You, you can think of them as browsers, right? What a host organization essentially does is like it removes away the friction, the complexity of having to deal with an old and clunky operating system that is designed for a different era. For all of us, for all of us here who want to focus on, on our mission, on what we do, on what we, we love. And you know what the ultimate open collectives are? Cities. Cities are the ultimate open collectives. Open collectives are networks by definition. And cities are networks of individuals that live in a common space. That networks on top of which we as citizens can, um, can contribute and we can have impact on our daily lives. Like, there's nothing like the city for us to create collectives on. And also cities are chapters of a global network. Right? If we think of cities as chapters of a global network of cities, then they can start sharing, mutualizing resources. Right? Cities can start cutting learning curves for one another. They can share um, spare capacity with each other. They can share the blueprints for initiatives that work well. They can pool resources for the same initiative in different cities around the world. And cities are also platforms. City, if you think about it, is common infrastructure on top of which we can contribute, on top of which we can create collectives and contribute. And, I mean, we all know it here, but change is not happening soon enough or where it matters in the bureaucratic model that we're living under. And at the same time, there are so many amazing citizen-led initiatives to improve, to improve cities all over the world. But the problem is that, again, they're all working separately. They're all working in their own silos. So our ability to have impact is greatly reduced by this. I mean, there has to be a better way of doing this. And here is an, an idea. Excuse me. This is Brussels together. Um, facing the nation states um, increasing um, out of syncness with reality, to put it mildly, Brussels Together was created last September with one goal. They wanted to transform the city of Brussels into an open platform on top of which the citizens that live there could contribute to make it a better place to live and work in. By using Open Collective, what Brussels Together is doing is enabling any in a citizen initiative in Brussels to be part of the same network. So they can start raising money transparently in they can create a virtual association in no time. They can be up and running very quickly and start raising funding um, transparently without needing to go through the pain of creating a legal entity. Brussels Together is truly taking knowledge sharing to a different level, to a whole new level, by enabling every, every initiative in Brussels to mutualize costs, to learn from each other, to share with each other. And by doing it transparently, what's amazing is that now we are starting to see things like, okay, hang on, you're actually paying too much for that. We, we did this last year and it worked really well. We have some spare capacity here. Or I see that, that you are needing this lawyer you know, um, or, or accountant service. Like, we can do that as well. We can do that for you. So suddenly technical roles, bureaucratic roles, are shared across a network. And it's freeing everyone to focus on what they love and making Brussels the best possible city. And the beauty of it is that the model is fractal, right? In the same way that Brussels together is, um, is, is helping and it's bundling together previously scattered initiatives in the city of Brussels, a, a network of European cities, for example, can unlock a whole other level of agency. And a network of, made up of cities from all over the world can tackle climate change. I mean, I did say I was I'm not optimist, right? Um, so the associations of the internet generation, the open collectives, are designed by peer production, 
global communities, transparent money flows, and the obsolescence of hierarchy. It is for these collectives that we need to build financial mechanisms and a sustainable organizational structure that will enable them to operate at a global scale. And yes, this is an experiment, like mostly everything that we do. And no one knows how it's going to end up happening, what's the right tool for this, but this is the space that we want to experiment in. But there's one thing that I'm sure about. I think that the only way of pushing the boundaries of what's doable in the world is by building a new model that renders the existing model obsolete. That's the only way of pushing forward. Or as I personally learned the very, very hard way, if you can't beat them, you know what, abstract them and move on, right? There's a world out there we need to improve. Thank you.